but you have to know where you are in your business. And the, the truth of the matter, the truth that people refuse to say out loud is that if you cannot drive your organic audience to make a decision, you cannot drive a paid audience to make a decision. And so you just take your money and flush it down the toilet. Welcome to the Marketing for the Culture podcast, powered by the African American Marketing Association. Each week, we'll bring you an insightful conversation from some of the best experts in our industry on how to advance our career. Join the collective of Black marketers across the world advancing their brand as we work towards creating a collaborative community. Hey, good people. Welcome back to the Marketing for the Culture podcast. Today's special guest is Brianka Johnson. She is a speaker at the upcoming Marketing for the Culture Summit. So I'm so excited to have her today. She is an expert when it comes to helping corporate women use their transferable skills to become more profitable outside of corporate America. Brianka, welcome to the show. How are you doing today? No problems. Thank you so much. I'm super excited to be here. Yeah. So why don't you go ahead and tell us a little bit about yourself? Of course. So I am the owner and founder of Brianka Johnson and Company, and we help corporate women package their um, expertise into sellable offers so that way they can make more money. Um, I am a former digital director. So I was a digital director for years. Um, I actually went to school for marketing and got my master's in marketing, advertising, communications. And then when COVID um, happened in 2020, I realized that I was going at life speed, um, but I was like just very unhappy in my career. And I had this business that was um, generating a lot of revenue as a side hustle. And so I decided to take a step back from my job as a digital director for a national nonprofit and focus on building my business. And so that is what I've been doing over the last two years. Um, We have had over 587 students in one of our four core programs. Um, And we basically help them build profitable, sellable offers and launch them, market them online. Very cool. So walk us through how you went from side hustle to main hustle, because you're making it sound a little bit too easy right now. (laughs) Yeah, no, it wasn't. Um, (laughs) Not at all. Um, So my business was actually a side hustle for um, about six years. Um, I started it in college. So when I was getting my bachelor's degree, I had this big idea that I wanted to be, um, and not a big idea, like it was unattainable. It's definitely attainable, but I wanted to be the chief marketing officer for Target. And so I knew that um, the the, like industry in which I was located, which was St. Louis, Missouri, I knew that they weren't really with the times as far as digital marketing, like they were a little behind the curve. And so I didn't feel that I was competitive enough. And so because of that, I wanted to to grow my resume in a way that would make me stand out because I didn't feel like I necessarily had that professional experience. And so I started my business as a side hustle to grow my resume while also helping other small businesses um, implement digital marketing strategies. And one of the core things that I think really um, drove this initiative for me was the fact that I felt like a lot of the Black owned businesses that I knew and that I supported and rooted for did not have proper marketing or digital marketing strategies. And I felt like because of that, they were not generating the revenue. They did not have the awareness to really succeed and thrive in the economy and stuff. I kind of like put on my red cape and was like, if I can help more businesses implement marketing strategies, then there will be more of us in the industry. And so that's how it started. Um, And so I've worked with small businesses. I've worked with political campaigns. I've worked um, in industries and across the country, really like focusing on marginalized communities or businesses that target marginalized communities and helping them to leverage marketing strategies to grow that, to grow their brand awareness. Um, And so then through that, it's kind of like the snowball effect. Like you become known for this thing. So whenever someone is looking for a marketing strategist 
for their small business or for their nonprofit, um, people are people were in my DMs. They would send people to to me. They would send me emails. They would refer people. Um, And so I ended up working on a Senate campaign in St. Louis and he won. Um, And then from there, I got the opportunity to work as a digital director for the 2018 race to elect Stacey Abrams. Um, And I did that work. And then from there, I got asked to do another Senate campaign and then to work for a nonprofit. And so it just like continued until full-time business I'm sold I'm sold (laughs) let me (laughs) so before we double down into your expertise what do you think are some of the struggles with small business owners and even nonprofits when it comes to digital marketing do you think social media has simplified everything like what do you think are some of some of the hurdles yeah, so I think it's a number of things. I think that there is not um, a simplified way to understand how to market your business as an entrepreneur. And so a lot of times people's first definition of marketing is, oh, I just need to post more on social media, mm-hmm. which is untrue. And so they they end up posting more on social media, but they don't have the proper visibility strategies. They don't have the pro- proper engagement or nurture strategies. They don't have the proper offboarding strategies. They aren't collecting feedback. So all of these other parts of their marketing system are non-existent. So even though they're posting more on social media, it's really not doing them any well because these other things that should be working in support of that foundation are not actually working, right? Like they don't have good SEO. Their business isn't set up as a, as a Google business. They're not findable. They're not searchable. They don't use the right keywords. So like all of these things that people think, oh, I'll get to later mm-hmm. are actually the number one things that they should be focusing on. Um, and there isn't a framework, right? There isn't like a checklist. There isn't a, this is step one. This is step two. This is what you need to do. This is how you... Um, do that. And I think the second problem is that a lot of marketing tools are expensive. And so they don't have the funding to pay for these tools. They don't understand the purpose of the tools. They don't, they end up buying four of the same tool, which doesn't make sense because then they don't use them. Mm -hmm. Um, And so it really is just, I think the, the number one problem is like the education of it all. And whereas I feel like marginalized communities come in with little to no budget, our peers, um, our white co- counterparts are being funded. They are receiving grants. They are re- And so they're able to hire the proper help. They're able to invest in the proper systems and tools and, and resources to kind of level their playing field where ours is still sorely lacking. That's really true, Um, because I started AMA in February 2019, and June 2020, this guy reached out to me, gave me, gave the group a nice donation, and I was like, I would like to talk to you, and he, white guy, he was like, no, I'm good. I was like, sir, like, you gave me money, this deserves a phone call to say thank you, and he was like, do you know about Google Grants? And I was like, no, and he was like, Google Grants gives you nonprofits $10,000 a month in free Aspen. And it's just, you know, that access to information and then people that can help you. And a lot of companies have done better over the past couple of years on at least catering to um, nonprofits as well as black owned small businesses, black and brown small businesses. But you're right. Like we don't have the access to information, the resources, then the money or something equivalent to allow us to operate, to grow. Exactly. And then a lot of times we get the money, but we don't understand how to properly leverage that money to reach our audiences or to grow our visibility or to grow our brand. A lot of a lot of small businesses do not have a brand to market. Um, <laughs> and so they don't like, want to hear that. No. <laughs> they don't want to hear that. Always so confused. Why do you have five different shades of a color in your brand graphics? I don't understand. Um, and they, but they don't, they don't know these things. And and so in order for them to learn them, there's now this other barrier because now the only way for them to do it is invest thousands of dollars or to hire someone who's two thousand dollars a month. And so 
you know, I always hated that. <laughs> I just, I always hated it. So how, how do you help your clients today with what you do? How do you help your clients? Yes. So one of the things that I realized when I was making the transition from digital director to full-time entrepreneur was that I actually did not want to create a new business, like felt like an uphill battle and didn't really make sense to me. Um, what I re- and I enjoyed the work that I did in corporate America. Like I love to market, I love to strategize, and I think that I'm the best at it. And so because of that, I wanted to like I wanted to think strategically about how I could build a business that aligned with my purpose and my interests and also afforded me the opportunity to build the lifestyle that I desired to live a more harmonious life. Like in marketing, you're having to work 24 seven because something is always happening. Um, And so what I did was basically take what I was doing in my role as digital director. And I packaged it into an offer where I helped um, small businesses, nonprofits, political campaigns, um, develop strategic marketing campaigns. And that's how I grew my business. And I realized that a lot of the people is particularly the women of color that I work with are elite in their fields. I mean, they are women who I work with have been the creme de la creme of their industry and but their salary is capped because they can only make what they can make in their corporate career and they some of them want to leave corporate america yes but some of them don't some of them just want to make more money and they want to do it while leveraging that expertise that they've already cultivated they don't want to start from the beginning and so While thinking through that, you know, it took a lot of iterations of my business for me to get very clear on like, I want to work with the women who are the elite, who are the creme de la creme of their industry. And they just want to know, like, how do I take this expertise that I have working for this Fortune 500 company, package it into a sellable offer and make more money, whether I want to quit corporate or I don't? How do I do that? What's the pathway for doing that? And so that's what I help my clients do. Yeah. So because you said these women, they're great leaders, right? Mm -hmm. They're the best in their industry. And how do you help them overcome maybe imposter syndrome to get to that clarity? Because they're smart, they're capable, but this is a new lane for them. Yeah. So um, the name of my program is actually Clarity to Coins. (laughs) Um, But as a rule, I think that imposter syndrome is a scam. Like, I (laughs) I don't actually like, believe in it like I think that it's something that we have like taken on to like help us to cope with this idea of walking Mm -hmm. in a new territory that is harder or that is more challenging or that feels foreign to us Um, and so a lot of times like when I'm talking to my students and they're using this word you know I'm often saying like you're actually not an imposter You just don't feel confident in this yet, but the confidence comes from the doing. And so what do we need to do to help you feel more confident? Yeah. And like one of the things that I feel like has really like put my program above others and that has helped them to get that clarity is the very first thing that we start with is positioning your expertise. And so it's really a mindset um curriculum but it's not mindset because it's all based on data so what have you actually done in your career qualitatively and quantitatively that has delivered results what are those things and so then once you know those things you can never come to me and say I can't do this because we have data like we have actual living proof that you've already done this so we're not doing that like we're not going to now eradicate this data to to validate something that is untrue because the data says that you can do this. Um, And that is like the biggest mindset shift that they have because they come out of that and there is no imposter syndrome. There is no, can I do this? Because they they see clearly that they've already done it. So after mindset, what's next? So we position their expertise and then we start priming their audience. 
Okay. So we start thinking about like what platforms do they want to be on? How do we tell the story of their data or of their results or of their framework through content or through their emails? Um, how do we grow their visibility? Right. So what pla- like what um, profitable platforms do they need to leverage in order to continue telling the story of who they are and how they serve their clients. Um, And so we go through that part of the framework. And then after that, we plan their launch. So we identify what tools they need. We build out their launch systems. We build out their launch plan. We write their emails. We put, make it all come together into a streamlined system. And then we say on this date, we're going to go live. And then they launch. And then as they're going through launch, they get that support. They learn how to launch. They learn how to market. And then they learn how to build a profitable marketing system. So launching is this thing that happens one time or happens like on a cycle, on a system. So you launch and then you market and then you may launch again. Or you may decide that you want to leverage a marketing system, which is just like a more automated marketing system system to continuously drive leads to your business when you're not launching. And so they learn and not only how to execute this launch, but how to like leverage that momentum to continue creating new leads or driving new leads to their business. And when you um, say launches, I guess, what are some of the types of products? Are we talking about new, new products, courses, digital products, physical products? Yeah, so I actually um, don't do a lot of like product-based businesses. Okay. Um, a lot of the the women that I work with are either service providers um, or they are like some type of educator or they have like some form of a digital product. And then we align those products. So they'll have like their entry offer, their signature offer, their upsell and their downsell. And then we build out that entire funnel. And the person is like, well, I don't have a lot of followers. I only have... 1000 followers. Yeah, none of my none of my clients have a lot of followers. <laughs> like the girls like the girls don't come to me because they have 10,000 followers. Mm. Um and the reason for that is because like I built my platform on the premise that like webinars were like useless and pointless. Um they actually don't make sense because it only works if you already built up an audience. Yeah. And so if you don't have an audience, if you only have 500 followers, and 250 of them are your friends and family, then having a webinar kind of is moot. It doesn't make sense. Um, And so because of that, I focus specifically on people who did not have a business prior or who were not using Instagram in that way. And I teach them like how to make that pivot, how to leverage who they are, you know, through their content to build connection and then how to convert that audience into their business and like how to do it in a way that feels organic and natural to them. For example, on my Instagram, I share my outfits. I share date night. The girls know my dog name. They know when he's barking. They all say the same thing. Benji, you know, they see my nails. They see my, like, they see the full picture of who I am. Um, And that's important because I think that a lot of times like, Coaches teach us to like make Instagram just like sterile. It's all about my business. And that doesn't work anymore. Like it's now all about those relationships and that cultivating of relationships and that connection. Um, And so how do you do that strategically, basically? So two things. I do remember watching your video about webinars and I was like, this is going in and she she gets it. I was like, I like her. I like her. It's been a while. So I don't remember anything particular, but I do agree with you. Like you Mm -hmm. definitely have to have a nice size audience to funnel them through that webinar process to get the sales and all that kind of stuff. Exactly. But if you don't have that audience coming out and saying, I'm going to have a free webinar and I'm going to get 15 people into my service. Doesn't make sense at all. (laughs) <laughs> are spending a lot of money on ads to get people to sign up to your webinar, hoping that you get the return on the back end when they buy your product. Does that make sense? I actually don't teach paid advertising because a lot of the people who come to me are not yet in a place in their business where paid advertising makes sense. And they don't understand that, but I do. And it's my job and my responsibility to protect you in that way. Yeah, I mean, it's important because they they probably don't understand it because that's all they see. 
Yes. They feel like that's what they have to do. And it's like, no, there's a, there's another way to be successful. Exactly. But you have to know where you are in your business. And the, the truth of the matter, the truth that people refuse to say out loud is that if you cannot drive your organic audience to make a decision, you cannot drive a paid audience to make a decision. And so you just take your money and flush it down the toilet. And it don't make sense. Engagement is everything. It is. Engagement. It is. That connection, that 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 proof of understanding, that proof that you can deliver a transformation, that connection to your audience's pain points and how your service is the bridge of connection between where they are and where they want to be, that storytelling, that that proof, right, of like who you are and why you should be trusted is essential, especially in today's digital landscape where everybody can just pop up and be a coach or pop up and be an educator. It's got to be more than a paid and a paid ad that lends them. Mm. Oh, man, this is good. I'm excited. I'm excited. Okay. So like we said in the beginning, she is on the business of digital content panel for the marketing for the culture summit Thursday, May 12th in Atlanta, Georgia. So you, you've given us some nuggets, but what else can we expect the day of the event? Yeah, I'm super excited. So what can you expect? So I am fully myself at all times. And so <laughs> I honestly don't know what you can expect <laughs> other than the truth, right? <laughs> um, and, and you may not agree with the truth or with the things that I say because they are sometimes different and polarizing from what is being told. But I'm not saying this from a place of trying to rile you up. I'm saying this because I'm also speaking through the lens of what we do and what works for us in corporate marketing. And corporate marketing has been around for decades, for centuries, and it has worked time and time and time and time again. And it's not based on changing algorithms or new social media platforms. It's based on principles and data and facts and um, buying actions purchasing decisions, psychology, how people make those decisions, which is the lens that I teach from. And so if that is, if you want to build a business that is long standing, that is not just another Instagram business, that is not just another pop up business, then I am probably the person for you <laughs> because I don't believe in that, you know? And I, and I think the truth is that especially as women of color who are trying to break generational curses and leave legacies for our families and for our children. We really, truly, honestly have to understand how to build a business on a solid foundation and how to generate money in that business. Because if your business is not generating money, it's not a business. And that's a fact. And the IRS can actually take your LLC or your EIN if your business is not generating money. And so you need to be able to understand how to do that, how to do it consistently, how to do it when you want to do it, when you need to do it, when you have goals that need to be met. Um, and that is what I believe in. So that's what I'm going to talk about. Yeah, yeah. I love it. I love it. Music to my ears. Is there anything else you would like to share with our listeners today? No. Thank you so much for having me. I'm so excited. I'm so excited for the event. Now that I know I can, you know, decorate the table and add it. To <laughs> <laughs> I'm so excited. Um, so, yeah. So you'll probably see me in the room with the colorful table. So come on over, say hi. Um, but no, I really, I really appreciate it. Our talk today. I love when I get to kind of like nerd out on marketing. Um, and I'm really excited for the event. If you've not got your ticket, now's the time. Yes, 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 indeed. Brianka, I want to thank you once again uh, for joining us today, as well as next month. Yes. And to all of our listeners, as always, thank you for your continuous support. Remember, I believe in you. Thank you for listening to Marketing for the Culture podcast. If you haven't already, please subscribe, whether it's on Apple, Google, Spotify, or your favorite podcast platform. And of course, our videos are on YouTube. If you have a moment, feel free to give us a rate, review, or just comment. 
We appreciate our sponsors for their continuous support. Also, if you're interested in learning more about our sponsors or becoming a member of the African American Marketing Association, visit aa-ma.org.